Welcome. NOAA has just released its Global Climate Report for March 2015 and also the period for the first quarter of 2015. Plus there's also some interesting climate uh, data in the news. The global temperatures are running a fever. March 2015 was the hottest March on record. Global temperatures were 0.85 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. That's about 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Land was the second highest ever recorded. Oceans were the third highest March ever recorded. That makes seven of the last 11 months have set or equaled record high temperatures. And we have now established a weak El Nino, which will make things even warmer for the next few months. Here's the temperature graph for the, this period. Here's the difference for the northern and southern hemispheres. The northern hemisphere was the third highest, as was the southern hemisphere. Temperatures for the first quarter of 2015, global was the hottest on record. Land was the hottest on record. Oceans was the third hottest on record. The northern hemisphere was the hottest recorded so far, and the southern hemisphere was the fourth hottest. Here's the global temperature map. You will note that there are only four pixels on this map. These are all equal area pixels so that have recorded record cold. That's the darkest blue color. Whereas 105 pixels here have recorded record heat. That's the brightest red color. Global temperature records. Again, if the global climate is warming, there should be more higher temperature records than low and vice versa if cooling. For the last year, there have been 84,000 high temperature records set and only 55,000 low temperature records set. For the monthly record, there's even a larger difference with 3,500 high temperature records being set and only 1,700 low temperatures records set. That's less than half. The Arctic ice sets a new record low for March 2015 and the southern hemisphere is the second highest on record. When you combine the two, overall sea ice is declining. The Arctic sea ice uh, looks as though it's on a record setting pace. The 2015 is shown here in red and it's below every other year so far and uh, will likely remain that way for the rest of the year, especially with El Nino forming. And you can see the record for March over the last 30 years or so and it's a linear downward trend. The global carbon dioxide level has gone over 401.5 parts per million. It will start declining as the northern hemisphere gets into spring. It's certainly higher than it has been for the last million years or more. There's an article in Scientific American on 13th of April, Have We Passed the Point of No Return? They claim that the critical level of carbon dioxide is 450 parts per million. At the rate of, of increase of two parts per million per year, which is what we're currently going at, the time left to get zero carbon emissions is less than 25 years. Uh, one part of this is the permafrost is likely to melt, and this is the so-called carbon bomb. There's an article in Nature on the 14th of April about this. In the top three meters of the Arctic permafrost is locked away about one trillion tons of carbon. That's enough carbon to triple the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, up to 1,200 parts per million. The Arctic is warming faster than any other part of the Earth. As the soil warms, microbes start to work on the releasing the carbon, further warming the soil. And this gives a positive feedback and could create an even more rapid melting of the permafrost. And this is the so-called carbon bomb. However, the, the research described in Nature indicates that it's likely to be a much more gradual process than uh, an explosive release and uh, is, to, is likely to accelerate over the next hundred years or so, but it'll still give us um, a little more time. If you look at the distribution of methane in the atmosphere, you'll note that most of the methane is at the highest latitudes, and that's where the permafrost is melting. Interesting news about Saturn, there's an explanation now for the great storm, and unlike suspicious observer claims, it's not solar reactivity. The storms on the gas giants are generally caused by internal processes. Uh, this storm appears every 20 to 30 years. It appears either at the equator or mid-latitudes. In this case, it's at mid-latitudes. And the Cassini observations now show that it's caused by water vapor inhibiting convection in the atmosphere and allows a storm to build up. This also explains the mysterious lack of ammonia in the storm because the, the water is actually raining it out. That's it for today. Goodbye for now.